Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to flush a coolant system using the Blue Devil Coolant Flush product. Now, I'm not going to lie, this video is more of a supplementary video for an upcoming video I'm doing where I actually show you how to use the head gasket sealer stuff correctly. And uh, a big step in that uh, on the bottle is to use the Blue Devil Coolant Flush and go through all the steps for that. So this video is kind of a supplementary one to the one that's going to be coming out pretty quick here where I do use that head gasket sealer stuff and I follow the directions exactly. And uh, yeah, so this is the proper way how to do it. And it's important to know I've already taken the thermostat out of this particular truck. Um, that's a pretty necessary step when we're flushing using this product. Um, it's just a good idea to do that. And you have to do that anyway to use the head gasket sealer stuff we're going to be using in the next video. So. Uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. The next thing we're going to do is grab the upper radiator hose and squeeze it just to make sure there's no residual pressure and the engine is cooled. That way when we uh, crack open the coolant system, it doesn't explode all over us and burn our skin off. So make sure that this has plenty of get give just like that. We can also open our radiator cap once we're sure that there's no pressure in the system by squeezing that upper radiator hose. There we go. So on the passenger side near the front of the vehicle, just above the frame rail, I'm go ahead and zoom in. See that black piece jettisoning out there? That is the petcock. And there's normally like a black uh, nut on the end of it, just there, that you would loosen and then coolant would kind of leak out of that hole on the right. Uh, but it looks like somebody's done the decency of just breaking mine off on this particular truck. So we're gonna have to do it the hard way and make a giant mess by taking off the lower radiator hose, which is located way over there. We'll go look at that later. Um, but if you have the petcock actually attached, or the, if you have the plug attached like you probably do, go ahead and just remove that and then it'll do a nice slow drain. But for me, we're gonna have to get messy and take off the lower radiator hose. So if that's why you're wondering that's why I'm doing that, that would be why. And on the other side of the frame rail, we can see the lower ra radiator hose just there behind the transmission cooler line. And it has one of those GM spring-loaded clamps on it, but we have a special tool that we can use to make our lives a little easier. And we'll slide that um, rusty hose clamp there back a little bit and then we can get that hose off there and make a big old mess. So we should get to doing that. So I've removed the battery and tray. That is uh, not really necessary for doing this kind of thing, but it is if you want to film it. So I went ahead and removed it so you can kind of get a better grasp of what I'm doing. It does make working on a little bit easier, but I know there's a lot of people out there that say, you don't need to do that to get that done. And they're right, but I make it hard on yourself when you could just remove three bolts. There we go. And once the hose clamp is behind the actual barb on the radiator, we can go ahead and let it go. The barb's right about where the end of my finger is. Um, because it's not actually holding on to anything at that point. And we don't want to remove, um, and we can't really move it too much because of these uh, AC lines. So now we can uh, wrestle this lower radiator hose off, which is going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to go ahead and let that drain out for a little while. We want to just Make sure that the engine is uh, out of coolant. We can bend that uh, lower radiator hose down too and that'll help kind of gravity uh, press the, or gravity flow the coolant out. So now we can reattach our lower radiator hose now that our system is more or less completely drained. Go. Put that back on, there we go. Replacing, when replacing your spring-loaded hose clamp, make sure that your hose clamp is behind the actual barb. You can feel it uh, not exist, get kind of bigger, and then shrink down a little bit. You want to be behind that barb surface, so that way it'll retain pressure uh, when this thing gets hot. And then we can connect our reservoir tank back up, our blow-off tank there, and uh, now we're ready to fill this thing. And as per the instruction, our first flush is going to be just water. So we're going to go ahead and fill the radiator uh, with some just plain Jane hose water. All right, we've got a little bit of water left in our funnel here. And I like this funnel because it'll constantly feed the engine water as needed. 
Um, we can just kind of keep an eye on that. We're just going to leave the engine on for about 10 minutes with the heater on full blast. And then we're going to drain the water and then we're actually going to put the coolant flush stuff in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes with the heater on full blast, letting it just idle, uh, get a little warm. It's not super hot. It's not under pressure. There's no cap. Um, so basically the water is just flushing throughout the system right now. So we're going to remove that water. We're actually going to let the truck cool down, then remove that water. And then we're going to move to the radiator step so and if it comes if the water comes out like super grungy and awful repeat this process a few times and I'm not going to show on film uh, flushing it again you guys have already watched me take the low radiator hose off which is what I'm going to do remove the low radiator hose fill it up with water and add our radiator flush so I'm going to do that off camera all right now that our coolant system is once again drained we're going to go ahead and add our Blue Devil Radiator Flush, and uh, I'm just gonna put the whole bottle in, and then add water. And then we're gonna let it uh, run for 10 minutes with the heater on high once again, and then after that, we're gonna drain the coolant system one more time. So, we're gonna make sure this is nice and flushed out before we put in our head gasket sealer. And once again, fill up our cooling system with just plain Jane hose water. Now that the flushing compound's in there with a full radiator of uh, hose water, we can go ahead and let the truck run for 10 minutes with the heater on. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut the truck off. All right, I've turned the truck off. Now uh, what we can do is remove our uh, water once again after the engine is cooled down to an appropriate level. It's at about 130 degrees right now, which is just warm enough to scald you pretty good. So we're going to let that cool down, drop the water again, I'll do that off camera, and then we're ready to move on to our head gasket sealant chemical step. So that's how to prep your coolant system for using the head gasket sealer stuff on your engine, which is a really cool alternative to actually having to do a head gasket. And we'll talk about that more in the next video uh, when we approach using the actual Blue Devil uh, head gasket sealer, but if you just wanted to flush your coolant system, this is this video is also applicable to you. Uh, you probably don't need to use the chemical from Blue Devil, but uh, I recommend it. It seemed to work pretty well, and we had a very clean coolant system at the end. Thank you so much for watching. All applicable links are down below in the description. You've been amazing. Uh, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.